Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my kitchen. It has been, for real, like a long time since I've made a video in my kitchen. Um, now, one of the, first of all, this is going to be kind of like a disjointed video. Hopefully I can put some clips of the different flowers that I'm talking about in this video. But no promises because I am not the most organized person in the world. Just being totally honest with you guys there. It is a pretty common thing, a pretty common question that I get here on this channel. People ask, well, you know, I've never grown a cut flower garden before. Where do I even start? Is it too late? What do I do? Help me. And so with this video, I wanted to make this one just a really quick, simple video talking about the flowers that I first grew the first time I ever tried to grow a cut flower garden. Now, there's nothing special about the flowers that I'm going to show you in this video. I mean, you know, like special, like special requirements to grow them or anything like that. There's nothing special about these flowers. All of these flowers are pretty much no nonsense, no fuss, just really easy flowers to grow. Um, you can direct seed all of these flowers into the garden. Of course, you want to make sure your flower bed is well amended, it's weed free, everything like that. But all of these seeds can be direct sown into the garden as soon as your last frost has passed where you live. I should go ahead and note that these aren't cool season flowers, these are warm season flowers and that will impact how they grow where you live because I live somewhere that gets pretty hot in the summertime. We're usually, by July, we're up, you know, about 90, 95 Fahrenheit. Sometimes it climbs over 100. So not too hot, not tropical or anything, but we do get a good amount of heat and humidity. So all of these flowers are flowers that will do perfectly fine with the heat and humidity and grow well. So getting on into this, the first flower I wanted to talk about was Torch Tithonia. This is Torch. This is the kind of um, orange. It's a bright orange flower. They also come in yellow, the Tithonia do. I really love Tithonia because they can be direct sown. Uh, it, ideally, it's better to transplant them if you can start them in a seed tray, but you can direct sow them with some success. I've had plenty of success with those before. Uh, these aren't the best for cut flowers. You can use them as cut flowers, but they are kind of delicate. But these will attract so many butterflies. Here in my yard, they reach, you know, six feet tall, sometimes eight feet tall, and they are just covered with these gorgeous, bright, really intense colored blooms in the fall. Uh, these are definitely one of my favorites. One of these days, I'm going to grow the yellow one. I've never grown the yellow one before. We also have some Cosmos. Now these are the Picote, I guess you say it, Cosmos. And I also have, if I can find it in my seeds, one second. In addition to the Picote, we have the Bright Lights Orange. Really vibrant purples and whites and pinks and the Bright Lights are always the bright orange. Now, uh, these are insanely easy to grow from seed. They will do so well in a seed bed and bloom for you during the summer. These are hands down one of my favorite flowers for beginners and for people who have never grown flowers before. Moving on, we also have some Siam Queen Basil. Now in general, I find that any basil works really well for cut flowers. It kind of does dual purpose. So if you have a vegetable garden and you're like, oh, I kind of want to experiment with the idea of cut flowers. I kind of want to branch out and try that and see if I like it. Uh, basil is a great choice. Obviously, throughout the season, you can harvest those basil leaves and use the basil leaves. But once they start to bloom and flower, you can also use the basil flowers um, in cut flower arrangements and filler and foliage. And it looks really, really nice. There are so many different types of ornamental basils you can choose from. I just got this basil as a gift. Somebody gave me seeds for... Um, a present. So I didn't pick this basil, but nonetheless, basil is basil and super easy to germinate, super successful, can handle the heat, definitely a good option. In addition to basil, we also have some zinnias. Now zinnias are easily one of my favorite easy to grow flowers, mainly because zinnias, even when direct sown, they can thrive. And even in poor soils, when it's hot, when there's insect pressure, Zinnias really are just that hardy plant that can survive. And 
As I said, you can definitely direct sew these, but if you are planning to direct sew zinnias, I recommend that you choose a cheaper, more generic mix. I know a lot of times when you first start growing cut flowers, it can be so tempting to grow, to want to grow like the queen red lime or the, ooh, binary salmon or something uh, more expensive, but I do find that you get more bang for your buck when direct sewing zinnias if you choose um, one of the cheaper still beautiful varieties rather than one of the more expensive varieties that you get less seeds i mean obviously the germination rate in the soil is going to be fine but um especially if you're a beginner better to just you know learn first is how i always kind of look at it it's one of my other absolute favorite varieties for cut flowers and beginner flower growers we have amaranth now, amaranth is so great. This stuff, once you have it in your garden, there's a, there's a chance that you might have it forever. So that is something to take into consideration. For example, there's a variety of amaranth I have in my yard. It's called Elena's Rojo. I got it from Baker Creek probably five years ago now. I haven't planted it since five years ago, but every season it comes back and I just let it go to seed and drop seeds everywhere. I really love it. This is another dual purpose plant. Again, if you want to think about adding a cut flower patch to your vegetable garden, this is another great plant to do that because, you know, amaranth has so many uses. That is something you do need to keep in mind when you are planting your first cut flower patch is that a lot of cut flowers are toxic. You want to make sure that, you know, your kids and your pets and everybody else is safe in the garden. Make sure they're not getting into anything that they shouldn't be. Make sure you're using, you know, proper steps to handle these plants so, you know, you don't have skin irritation or anything like that. You want to just make sure you research each variety that you plan on planting really, really well so that everybody can stay safe. Next, we have another one that readily reseeds like crazy. This is Red Shizo. I first started growing Shizo about two years ago. Um, it has, the foliage has this beautiful aroma and it can definitely be direct sown from seed. The stuff grows like crazy, especially in my heat and humidity. It seems to love the humidity. Now, um, you can pick the foliage for cut flowers, but you have to be really careful when you condition it so that they won't wilt. Ideally, I like to use this red shizo. Uh, once it goes to flower, uh, those flower stalks look really, really nice in cut flower arrangements. So that's another one that's a good option. In addition to our shizo, we also have some marigolds. Now, uh, I'm not sure if these marigolds are bedding marigolds or tall marigolds. You will want to make sure when you are buying seeds, a lot of flower varieties have dwarf versions and tall versions. So you want to make sure when you are buying seeds for things like marigolds and celosia and things like that, that you are buying a tall version. I didn't get this. Uh, this was part of a gift, so I'm not quite sure how tall these are. Uh, this says the height is 12 inches. So these, these are bedding marigolds, but it's no big deal. So, uh, tall marigolds, another one. Some people don't like the way they smell. They can smell kind of skunky, but they do last really long in cut flower arrangements. Uh, up next, we have some celosia. This is another example of something that might come in a dwarf variety. You want to make sure you get the tall variety of this. These are a little bit harder to direct sow. You might not have as good results with these. I personally prefer to transplant these because sometimes these seedlings can get lost in the weed competition early in the season. But overall it will grow so I think this one is maybe worth a look if you like these interesting celosia flowers. These blooms are so cool. They also come in different plumes. Uh, very good for a beginning cut flower garden. Next up we have some sorghum. Mainly I just like to include sorghum in this list because you can use sorghum as a filler. It does take a lot of space in the garden. It's not really the best for a beginner cut flower patch, but it is something to consider if you want to consider making wreaths or something later in the fall once everything has started to dry out in the garden. Last but not least in this list I have Sunflowers. Sunflowers are a no-brainer. I think sunflowers are probably the number one flower that I would suggest for anyone who is growing a cut flower garden for the very first time. There are just seriously so many options. There are open pollinated sunflowers. There's 
hybrids that you know for example I'm growing Pro Cut Brilliance this year these Pro Cut Brilliance they are pollenless they don't have any pollen so when you pick them that you're not going to be losing pollen all over you know a vase and dropping pollen everywhere they still do attract you know bees they still have nectar that the bees and the butterflies love and feed on but there's no pollen so these aren't going to produce any seeds however you can pick an open pollinated variety that will produce seeds you can save seeds um, really just a great option these can be planted directly in the garden with no problems whatsoever and I just have a really really beautiful bloom that's really it for this video these are some of my absolute favorites for you know just this is my first time growing a garden this is my first time trying to grow cut flowers to you know make flower arrangements uh, these are my favorites I think these are really easy and as long as you have sufficient heat in the summer and you sow after you know all chance of frost is gone I think these could really help you be successful growing cut flowers for the very first time as always, if you have any suggestions of what should be added to this list, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. I'm sure everybody would really appreciate it. Leave your experiences growing this kind of stuff. Uh, if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you've ever seen, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, it'll tell you whenever I'm making new videos. I'm trying to make new content all the time. Sometimes it's about flower farming, sometimes it's about soap making. Sometimes it might be another random DIY project. You really never know what you're going to get on this channel. So if you like a surprise, you might like it. I hope that you guys are having such an amazing day, and I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.